Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to talk about something that I know will push quite a lot of people's buttons. So you know that I don't really like disclaimers, but I'm gonna have to put one here because people on the internet are fucking crazy, me included. So I'm gonna be talking about sexual misconduct, sexual assault, sexual harassment, a whole array of sexual type of behavior. One of the things I want to say before going into this video is that as much as I support the Me Too movement within reason, I also don't believe in believing anyone just because they have a certain type of chromosomes, okay? So there's no a priori here. I'm not gonna believe you just because you're a woman. I'm not gonna be against you just because you're a man or vice versa. So when I go into this, I wanna go into this with logic rather than emotion. And I know that there are plenty of people who go through these horrible cases of sexual misconduct of sorts. And I'm not saying that all of them are lying. I'm not saying that all of them are telling the truth. I'm just saying there has to be a due process. And I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna just believe you because you're a woman. I just don't think that's fair to anyone. So Aisha Morgan was on the TV show Catfish that I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with, with the two co-hosts. Neve and Max. So Aisha has come out with two videos, a part one and a part two, about her experience on the show Catfish. She had previously made another video. However, in these videos, she talks about sexual misconduct in terms of Neve and also sexual assault and misconduct. There isn't much detail in that part, but we'll get to it, of a um, producer, I think it was, or someone of the crew. So we're going to talk about those videos. I'm going to put some clips in here and there, but both videos are over 10 minutes, so I obviously cannot include everything. In this video, I'm going to talk about all the points I take issue with. I strongly, strongly suggest that you yourself go and watch both of these videos and then make up your mind. Maybe watch both videos and then come back if you want, but I will be inserting the clips and talking about where I see problems in these allegations. When you click on part one of the video in the description, and even at the end of her part one video, Aisha says if this video gets to 500 likes, she will release part two. Obviously the 500 likes got there and she released part two. I understand that her reasoning was that she wanted awareness to be brought to the whole subject and that's why she wanted 500 likes or to know that people were interested. I understand that. At the same time, if you're talking about something so serious and so dear to your heart, do you really care about the numbers that much? I don't know. To me, that seemed a little bit suspect. I'm not saying that that means she's lying. I'm just saying that was a little bit weird to me. Okay, so at 1 59, she starts talking about money and how she would never do this kind of thing for money. And I realize that it makes sense to have that disclaimer because you know that people on YouTube will probably assume the worst. At the same time, she goes on for what I consider to be a little too long about how she's doing well and she has money in the bank and who would do that. And it seemed a little bit too much in terms of trying to convince the viewer that she's not doing it for money to the point where it was excessive and you're like okay stop we get it out there I don't want any money <laughs> I don't want any I don't want anything from these people I'm well off I own a business my bank accounts looking good so I definitely don't need any money that's definitely like not even a thought like I would never put a situation like this out there for money this is a serious situation and I would never I would never lie about anything anything that has to do with this topic for any amount of money like it just wouldn't happen like you just don't lie about things like that at five minutes and 25 seconds Aisha describes a, the fact that there are so many people as part of the crew she was saying that she expected it to be Max and Neve and then just you know like a cameraman or something but she was saying that there were quite a few people there which to me it was confusing because she mentioned that Neve was saying some of these things while other people were there to the point where Max even told Neve to calm down. So if there are so many people around you, how has this not been reported by other people? How come no one has come forth to say, we didn't see everything, but we did see a couple moments where Neve was being inappropriate, where Neve was saying things that are not okay. If there's so many people, it's hard for me to believe that no one saw anything. And of course, there's the possibility that someone saw something and they're just scared and they don't want to get into trouble, certainly. but. That too is a little bit strange. I still thought he was a cool guy at this point. Like, you know, we were getting to know each other and I was getting to know all the whole team because I had no idea it would be that many people. Like, I don't know why I thought it would just be like um, Jack, John, and then 
like a camera person, but it's a lot. It's a lot that goes into it. There's so many, you know, production assistants, producers, the executive producer. There's so many people that are with you. So it's like, it's, it's pretty cool. You know, it was pretty cool. So I was just trying to get to know everybody. At seven minutes and 37 seconds. Aisha says that Neve is talking to her and trying to convince her that essentially she should have a sexual experience with a man um, because, you know, she doesn't know what she's missing out on and maybe she's bisexual instead of a lesbian and going along this kind of thread of trying to convince her that she's not a lesbian. So then he says that she should experiment with people and he should be the one that she experiments with and he goes on to say that he has a big dick. Now, <laughs> look. This moment to me was hard to believe for the simple reason that if you've seen Catfish, everything that's been said so far seems incredibly out of character. Now I know that people can hide who they are on television. I'm not saying that just because you watch a show, you know who someone is. But to me, this moment rang kind of weird. It seemed a little bit too graphic. I don't know. It seems like a stupid thing for Neve to do to say that to her considering that she could easily do what she's doing now and go on the internet and be like, hey, Neve said this, this, and this to me. So that moment was very strange to me because it seemed very, very explicit and just out of the blue. But again, that's just my opinion. I'm not saying she's lying for sure. I'm just saying these are things that don't add up to me. And he was like, well, I think you should try it. I have a big... I would tear your ass up. God strike me down right now if I'm lying. Like all this shit and like I'm shook because I'm like the way you portray yourself on TV is totally different than the jackass you are in person. At 9.15, okay, so at this point it's late night and they need to wake up early the next morning. So considering that Aisha has felt so incredibly uncomfortable around Neve, you'd think that she just, you know, get to a room and go to bed and avoid him entirely, right? wrong. Apparently, Neve tells her, you know, like, get to your room and then once you get your luggage, call me and we can hang out. And she says that the reason she was kind of open to this is because she thought they were all going to hang out at the bar with the crew. Unfortunately, that was not the case. And she then says that Neve came up to her room and wanted to hang out with her alone. So this part to me did not make sense because first of all, if you're so uncomfortable around someone, why would you be open to hanging out with them even if there are all these other people around? Because like she said, plenty of times there were other people around and still there was this uncomfortable situation, right? Aside from that, if you were gonna hang out with him, wouldn't you want to make sure that other people would be there? You know, just to kind of defend you or so you could run away and hang out with other people? Wouldn't you ask, hey, is anyone else gonna be there? Are we hanging out at the bar? Like, wouldn't you ask more questions if the person you feel so uncomfortable with is pretty much asking you to hang out without letting you know that it's gonna be alone? I don't know, I just feel like if you're so uncomfortable, why aren't you asking more questions? Mind you, it's like 1.30 in the morning, so I have to, we have to be up at like 6 a.m. to film, so everybody's just trying to get to sleep and, figure out the hotel situation, get our room keys and all that good stuff. There and everybody's like getting their keys and sorting out their stuff or whatever. And my producer goes, hey, you can, um, hi baby. It's my puppy, you guys. So my producer goes, hey, um, if you have your room key, you can head up cause you have to be up early. Like it's fine. Like you, you can, um, you can head up. And I was like, okay. And then Jack uh, comes up to me and he whispers, he goes, after they bring your luggage upstairs, um, up to your room, call me and we can hang out. He was like, are you down to hang out? And I was like, yeah, that's fine. I didn't know, like, I don't know. I thought we were all gonna hang out. There was a bar. Everybody was talking about the bar in the hotel. So I didn't know what we were gonna do. I didn't know what hanging out consisted of, but I knew like, you know, I thought we were probably gonna go to the bar. I go to my room and they bring my bags and I call them and I'm go, I call him and I go, hey, like they brought my bags and he goes, okay, um, I'm, I'm going to come, I'm going to come over. And I was like, okay. So he comes and he comes in and he's like, oh, we can hang out in here. And I was like, okay, mind you at this point, it's like almost 3 a.m. And so my room had two beds. So I was on one bed 
and he was on another bed. Then we get to the second video. So in the second video, at 0.35, Aisha starts talking about how once Neve leaves her because she says she wants to go to bed, he is blowing up her Instagram with comments, with heart eye emojis, with God knows what, right? And she says that even her friends were noticing that he was commenting these things and they were like, hey, what the hell? And she mentioned specifically that she took screenshots. Now, if I were in her situation, this would have been the ideal moment to prove that I, in fact, am not, am not full of shit to put the screenshots on the screen. Were those put up? No. So no actual evidence was shown, though she claims to have that evidence. Aside from that, I want to ask you, does it seem logical in your mind that Neve, a public personality who is running a show, would comment hard eyes on the picture of a girl who he's interacting with because of the show, publicly? Does that seem like a thing he would logically do? Does that seem plausible? To me, that does not seem plausible. Had he DM'd her, had he done something more secretive, that would seem more plausible to me. But just commenting on her pictures where anyone can see it, anyone, literally his bosses, his family, whoever can see it, that seems crazy to me and honestly close to impossible. So unless screenshots are shown and are proven to not be doctored, that was one of the biggest points I had a problem with. I start getting like all these hard eyes comments and comments saying like, uh, come to Rome 409. I start screenshotting it and something told me like screenshot this. So I started screenshotting it. He was sending kissy faces and all this stuff. So I start screenshotting it and my phone starts blowing up. My friends are like, dude, so-and-so's really commenting on your pictures, like what's going on? Cause they're not supposed to know you're filming. So at 124, Aisha talks about the cast talking shit. So apparently everyone in the cast is sick of Neve and thinks that Neve is an asshole and that he flirts with everyone. So she joins into this conversation and she says that the cast says that they're not surprised that uh, Neve would be flirting with her, right? So my question is, if the entire cast knows this, it's hard for me to believe that the entire cast is so loyal or so gung-ho to keep their jobs that they wouldn't say anything, especially in the light of this Me Too movement where everyone and their mothers is coming out saying, you know, like, this person did this, this person did that. Why hasn't anyone said anything? And I'm not saying that just because no one has said anything, she's lying. But I'm just saying, if an entire cast is sick of someone like that, and they know that his behaviors aren't appropriate towards the people who come on the show, I'm wondering how it is that the higher-ups hadn't heard of this and no problem would have risen. You know, that's strange to me. Why hasn't anyone else come forward? Is she the only one? It's hard to believe if they're saying that he flirts with everyone. So that too, to me, seemed like a huge inconsistency. I start hearing the cast talking shit about Jack. The whole time, actually, I was filming, they were talking shit, talking about nobody likes him. He's an asshole. He, um just all this stuff so i'm starting to think okay like i'm not tripping this guy's a pure fucking asshole he treats women like they're fucking toys i'm not tripping so they start talking to me about it and they're like yeah it's true like whatever i was telling them like yeah he's flirting with me and they're like yeah we're not surprised at 2.52, Aisha mentions that her phone was broken the entire time and that she was having a hard time getting signal and she felt alone and so on and so forth. But at 0.35, she was talking about comments on Instagram. So that seemed like a small inconsistency. It probably is just, you know, her error of not telling us before, but that too seems like something that could make her look like she's making stuff up as she goes along. The entire time it was broken. I couldn't really communicate with anybody. I had to download a text-free app and the service still sucked in the area. So it was really hard communicating with anybody. So all I had was the crew. At 512, a new character is introduced into the story, Carol, who is another cast member. So Carol was essentially Aisha's driver and Aisha said that her and Carol got along and so at one point uh, Aisha was feeling lonely and down so she messages Carol, asks Carol to come and hang out. Carol says, no, sorry, I'm busy. And then Carol actually shows up with two really big beers and you know, like they hang out and they have a good time or whatever. Then while they're hanging out, Carol is like, hey, do you want to chug these beers? So they both chug the beers and Aisha says that she is not a big drinker, but she felt like this beer hit her really hard. Could be that the beers were this fucking big. Like, 
I'm definitely not saying she drugged me though. I'm definitely not gonna jump to conclusions and say anybody drugged me because that's a serious allegation. I'm not gonna say that. I'm only gonna speak on what I know. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm only gonna speak on the things that I'm sure about. At 5.47, Carol asks Aisha if they if she's open to going into Carol's room because Carol says that she has two beds and it would look suspicious if a crew member fell asleep by um, Aisha. So Aisha goes to the room and then it turns out that there aren't two beds. So in this moment, considering everything that has happened between Neve being allegedly creepy and Carol being weird too by lying about the bed thing, I wonder why Aisha didn't just sleep. Now we can say that alcohol definitely has an effect on this and might have, you know, like affected how severely she saw the situation, you know, like maybe alcohol made her brush it off or whatever, but that too seemed a little bit inconsistent, but we're keeping the alcohol in mind. So that one kind of whatever, right? He goes, I have two beds. And I'm like, oh, okay, like that's cool. Because at first I was like, I don't know, you know, cause what if I fall asleep over there? And she was like, I have two beds. We get to her room and there's one bed. And I'm like, I thought you said you had two beds. And she's like, oh, I thought I had two beds. We've been here for three days. You forgot you had one bed. So we're sitting on her bed. And I ordered some hot wings or whatever because I was like really hungry. The last thing literally I remember is just the drunk just hitting me like a ton of rocks. Like all of a sudden I couldn't, I couldn't feel my face. Like... It was like I was drunk off my ass. So then at 7.56, she talks about how she's coming in and out of consciousness because the drunkness just hit her really hard and she just remembers Carol on top of her. She then goes into no further detail of what happened with Carol, but it seems like some intense sexual harassment happened there. I don't want to speculate, but it seems like something serious happened there. And this is a part of the story that it's hard to talk about. No, I should go do it. All right, so have you, <clears throat> I know some of you guys are gonna know what I'm talking about, but the kind of drunk to where it's like, you can't control your body, you come in and out of consciousness. I've only experienced that one other time in my life. That's the scariest shit, especially being somewhere you're not familiar with, with people you're not familiar with. I woke up and she was on top of me. So at 9.08, uh, Neve and Max offer for Aisha to hang out in Neve's room because uh, the producer has her room key so she can't go back to her room. So like, you can come and hang out in here. And Aisha says yes because she's under the impression that Max is going to stay there the entire time, allegedly. Then Max leaves because he has to take care of some stuff. So she's stuck there with Neve by herself. I don't know why she didn't leave immediately. I don't know why she stayed if she was tired or whatever, but she ends up staying. Then at 9.20, she claims that Neve passed her a piece of paper saying, do you find me attractive? Now, this part is just my own opinion completely but it seems a little bit ridiculous that a grown man would pass a piece of paper to a girl while they're in the same room being like do you find me attractive to me it seems inconsistent that at one point he'd say hey i have a big dick and then the next moment he'd be passing her a piece of paper folded up like they're in third grade being like hey do you find me attractive you know that seems very strange again i'm not saying it's not true but it is a very big inconsistency and john was like oh i have to go to my room i have to handle something peace out pretty much so he left he went in his room so me and Jack were just talking or whatever and everything was cool at first and then like he hands me a piece of paper and the piece of paper says like do you find me attractive and all this stuff at 9 27 to lighten up the mood Aisha makes a joke about how she should be his female co-host he allegedly goes on to say oh are you really interested in that what are you willing to do and then she says or like it's understood that she would do nothing and then he's like oh then forget it so there the implied allegation is that he was saying that she would just get a job if she were to perform some kind of sexual act for him and at this point apparently she's so numb about what happened with carol that she doesn't really react or leave or say anything which to some extent i can understand if you have gone through some kind of traumatic thing being unresponsive to this kind of behavior i understand that at the same time we all still wonder why didn't you walk away like i made a joke basically and said oh you should hire me as your 
um, female co-host and he goes, oh, is that something you'd want to do? What are you willing to do for it? Nothing. So never mind. It was at this point to where like the comments were just, I was numb to him pretty much. I, I had the worst time and I remember it was just adding and adding and adding to my depression and I just remember I didn't even really react too much after you know the situation happened with Carol I didn't really react that much so it wasn't like I was like what the fuck da -da 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 -da. like I couldn't even react anymore then at 10.06 Neve asks Aisha about what happened with Carol because apparently everybody knew about what happened with Carol. It was, she was a bit of a laughing stock at the moment because everyone was talking about how Carol always gets lucky apparently. So then Neve asks about what happened with Carol and asks Aisha allegedly to perform the same things she did on Carol to him. And at that point she decides to get up and leave and she just waits outside of her room until the producer comes to give her the key. And that's where the video ends. He was sitting at his desk across the room. Then he gets up and he comes over and he sits on the bed. He goes, so he was like, I heard what happened with you and Carol last night. And I was like, oh really? And he was like, yeah. And he was like, what, what did you guys do? I want details pretty much. I was just like, oh, I don't know. He was like, you don't know what you did? And I was like, no. He was like, well, how about you do what you did to Carol, but on me? And he laid on the bed and he grabbed my arm. He didn't yank my arm, but he just grabbed my arm. Pulled my arm away, got my phone, got up, walked out, sat outside my door until my room key got there. Now, I want to make it clear. I'm not saying that I know for sure that she is lying. I do want to say that this seems incredibly inconsistent in my personal perspective. This does not seem like it did happen. I don't know about the Carol thing. That's a different situation. But even in considering this, the probability of being sexually assaulted in one way or another by two separate people on a show and telling nobody and nobody noticing and it all happening in such a small span of time just seems very, very implausible to me. Doesn't it to you? Doesn't it seem like a little too much happened in such a short amount of time? Especially because, like I said at the beginning, she did mention herself that there were crew members around all the time, so I'm wondering how this was entirely missed by everyone. So I'm just left with wondering why she's making this. And even at the beginning, she talks about how she has so much money and it doesn't matter or whatever, but at the same time, these videos are getting a lot of views. This is is getting a lot of no notoriety, fame, whatever you want to call it. So there are plenty of reasons why people would fake this. And even in the recent past, we have seen men getting exonerated because of false allegations against them that put them in prison because we keep ignoring due process. So all I'm saying here is that there has to be a due process and we can't crucify Neve just because you maybe get weird vibes when you watch him on TV so you know. I'm not saying that I know what Neve is like. I'm just saying there has to be a due process. And if she does have these screenshots, if she does have this proof, that has to be still shown. We can't just make these stories on YouTube and then decide that that's the truth all of a sudden. Anyways, guys, I know this video was a little bit different and heavy, but I watched the show and I really love the show, so I was really surprised to hear this. But more than that, once I watched those videos, it was really kind of aggravating because there were so many moments where it seemed so doctored and invented that I couldn't help but make a sort of response. Now, I'm not here to undermine any real allegations, and if this turns out to be true, I want him to suffer the consequences just like anyone else. I'm just saying that without proof, I don't think that we can just take her word for it. <clears throat> Let me know if you watch the show and your opinions, and I'm really curious to know where you stand on this. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons, as always, and let's get right into the fan art.